it's Elizabeth Brown, the Kitchen Vixen, and I just got home from a long day of work, and I was going to teach you how to make garbanzo beans from scratch, and then I forgot to soak them while I was at work, so God, now what am I supposed to do? I mean, you can't just make beans right before you go to bed. It's 8 o'clock. i got to go to sleep soon, and ugh, making beans from scratch is so hard. I mean, nobody wants to do it. It's ugh, That's why people don't eat beans. It's not convenient all those excuses. You know what? I'm tired of it because you don't have to soak them. It's not the end of the world if you don't soak them. I don't soak mine. I don't really care. It doesn't bother me. For some people, soaking beans might help with digestion, but I eat beans on a regular basis, so my body is used to it. So maybe if you forget to soak them, you can still make them and add them in small quantities to your diet. So after I show you how to make them in my next segment, I'm going to show you some other healthful recipes aside from those great garbanzo bean cookies I showed you how to make. But all you need is some dried garbanzo beans. And last time I showed you, I used some that I get at the 99 cent store, which are fine. I do try to get organic if I can. So this time I bought some organic bulk garbanzo beans from Whole Foods. Unfortunately, sometimes when you buy in bulk, because they have those nice thin little bags, the bag breaks when you get home. But I just want to show you what the garbanzo beans look like, because they're nice and dry and dehydrated. And that's normally how they're supposed to look. But before we cook them, we're going to pick through them, make sure there aren't any discolored ones or ones that maybe don't look like they're going to cook up properly or sometimes there might be some stones in there. So in order to go through them, I'm going to put them in a colander. That's something you can use to rinse your beans as well because that's another step we're going to do. So we're going to throw all the beans in the colander and we're going to pick through them. And I've already did kind of look through these so I can tell you they're pretty good. I did find, I found one little piece. See it's a little miscolored. I don't think this one's going to cook up great. I'm going to discard this one but that's what you want to look for is miscolored or things that don't look like their beans. And I even saw this thing online about somebody who opened up a can of baked beans and found a dead mouse in there. I mean, since these aren't canned, we're, we're obviously not gonna find pieces like that, but you know, you never know what kind of crosses the path of your, of your dried goods. So just look through them, and then you wanna rinse them off, just to kind of rinse off any impurities. And then we wanna bring a pot of water to boil and I already have my water in here because I wanted to get it started. But basically, I'm going to put my beans in here. And you want to make sure that you have enough water to cover the beans by about three inches. Or if you want to measure, it's up to you. I'm not a big measurer. But it's base. I like to do about four cups of water for each one cup of beans. So if you buy a, um, if you buy a bag of beans, a bag of beans actually has two cups in it. So two cups of dried beans in a bag, a pound, and eight cups of water. That's what I find works well. And honestly, if it's more, it's fine because we're going to cook these overnight in the oven. So I have a nice induction burner, which actually cooks really quickly. Okay. I'm actually going to add some more beans to this. So I have extras. I like to cook any, them all ahead of time. And that way I can keep them on hand. And what I do is I, I will store them in my yogurt containers in the freezer once they're cooked. I label and date them. Once they're cooked, they're good for three months in the freezer. In your refrigerator, they're good for about three or four days. So if you don't use them right away and you incorporate them into a recipe, you need to factor in that time. Three or four days from the time you prepare them fresh. So that's why sometimes if you don't know what you're going to do with them right away, it's a good idea to just freeze them in small batches, even maybe smaller yogurt containers, and that way you can take them out as needed for like, you know, maybe two or three cups at a time for some of the recipes that we're going to use. You know, the nice thing about garbanzo beans is that they're so high in nutrients. You know, we know beans are really high in fiber. Um, that fiber is actually what helps give them, like helps them help you with your memory. Could use a little right now. Because when food is digested slowly, which is what fiber does, it slows down the digestion process, slows down the release of glucose into your system, it gives your brain regular energy so you can think more clearly. And beans are also a really good source of folic acid, actually one of the top sources of all foods. And fol well, folate actually is what we get from the food source. So folate, is these beans are really rich in folate, and folate is essential for brain health. And they even show like, for example, when a woman is conceiving at that first part of life, that folate is so essential to the baby's brain development. So that's why women, it's usually recommended they take a multivitamin to get that folate or folic acid in the supplement form. But if you eat beans, especially garbanzo beans on a regular basis, you'll get that folic acid or folate that you need. And what
what's really cool is this is actually a walnut hat, and walnuts have been associated with brain health because they they look like the brain, but also because they are rich in omega threes, and we associate omega three with brain health because DHA from omega threes is the richest fat in your brain. But it's interesting to see that the garbanzo bean looks very similar to the walnut, and they're both great for your brain, also great for B vitamins. So that's just something. Sometimes food looks like the body part that it's helping, so it's interesting to note that. They also, some people think they look a little bit like a booty, and that doesn't hurt, because like I said, they're rich in fiber, and that fiber actually helps you eat less. It helps with appetite suppression, so you feel satisfied more quickly, and you tend to eat less, and people that incorporate beans, especially garbanzo beans, in their diet on a regular basis have been shown to lose weight, even if it's just like a half a cup a day. That makes a huge difference. So once we bring the beans to a boil, we're going to put them in the oven. I'm just going to add the rest of my beans here. It's so simple. Okay, so basically, the only reason this took any time is because I'm chatting you up, just to kind of give you some education. But really, all we want to do is bring them to a boil, and I'm going to set the oven for 250. And I'm going to cook them overnight for about six hours. Now, if you like to sleep eight hours, you might set them at 200. But that way, they're going to cook nice and evenly. The nice thing I, I like about using a, this Dutch oven or Dufo or anything like this that goes from stove top to the oven is that you can cook, cook them in the oven overnight. It's very safe, and it gives them a nice, even cooking temperature as opposed to, I've used pressure cookers. That's fine. That's just a whole other device that you'd need. But if you use a crock pot, for example, the crock pots I don't find cook as evenly, so I prefer this method, stove top to oven. And if you don't have that kind of pot, because they are a little pricey, if you just have a regular pot, but say it doesn't have an oven safe lid. So this one has, it's all metal, so this one could go in the oven just fine, but the lid is glass, so I wouldn't trust it in the oven overnight. I might just cover it with aluminum foil and do the same process. So just so you know, you don't have to have fancy cookware. And while my beans are cooking, you know, while I'm letting them come to a boil, as I said, I just got home from work, so this is a great time to maybe do your dishes and get things prepared for the next day because tomorrow when we wake up we're going to have to deal with those beans and we want to be ready. So some people talk about cleaning as you go but since I've already eaten my food a while ago I'm just doing my dishes from my daytime and I read this article on an Asian efficiency website and I thought this was really interesting. They use the term clearing to neutral and I think it's a really good behavior technique when you're trying to incorporate healthy habits. Clear to neutral which means Basically start where you started. Go back to where you started so that your, your space is always organized, clean, ready to go. So even after we do the dishes, we want to make sure that we dry them and put them away. So tomorrow when we wake up and we have to deal with those beans because in the morning we're going to have to cool them down, put them in separate containers, or put them in a, an ice bath while we get ready for work. And then we can at least put them in a refrigerator. And when we come home in the evening after work, you can you know, then freeze them, label and date them, or you can start incorporating them into recipes right away. So, looks like our beans are almost to a boil, because as I said, this induction burner is really quick. So we're gonna put them in the oven and cook them for the next six hours. And make sure you have, make sure you have your oven rack set low enough so you can fit your, burnt, your pot in there. Ooh, it's heavy. All right, so that's it. I want you to try to make your own beans from scratch. It is not difficult, as you can see. And then the next time, we're going to show you how to finish the process. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to splice some videos together. And then I'm going to continue with some more recipes. I have a great garbanzo bean smoothie. I have a chickpea salad. I've got this wonderful chickpea and peanut butter soup, which sounds very odd, but it's so delicious. And what else do I have? Hmm, I have one other one, but I. I'll remember it as we go through. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm Elizabeth Brown, the Kitchen Vixen, and I'm gonna write all these instructions on this video so you can learn as you go. Thank you so much, you have a great evening.